Thank you, Reverend Arlene Hilton, for the masterful reading of the inspirational writings of the day, and obviously for the evocation. For those of you tuning in, new to our spiritual community, Agape International, when we use the word evocation rather than invocation, both words are proper in their context, but oftentimes invocation means that we're pulling the presence of God here. Evocation means that it's already here and we're making ourselves available to what is already here. Why do we say that? Because the presence is never an absence. It doesn't come or go. It doesn't change up on its nature. It doesn't compromise nor contradict itself. The presence of love and beauty and intelligence, otherwise known as the presence of God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is always being itself, radiating itself, expressing itself. So we evoke the presence that we may be available to, as the reading indicated, to re-present what the presence is according to our uniqueness. You might have heard me say over the years that uniqueness is our superpower because we are incomparable. There's no one on the planet, multidimensional universes, parallel universes, that are exactly the same as we are. For this infinite presence does not, one, do do-overs. It gets us right the first time as we emerge from the eternal as distinct units of infinite potential and it never repeats itself. So there are no repeats. There are no repeats, leaves on the tree. It hailed in Los Angeles the other day. There's no unique balls of bits of ice, snow, or rain. That's exactly as the next bit of ball, snow, or rain. Infinitude is the nature of reality, the nature of the love intelligence that governs the universe. So as you are about to practice your, the art and the science of meditation, be aware of a couple of things. One, you are a unique, incomparable emanation of the only life that there is. So you are not entering into this to compare yourself to anyone else. Whatever stage of unfoldment you may be in, you don't have to look outside and compare. You need to begin with an awareness that right where you are is all of the presence and power and love and intelligence. That may not square with your experience of life at this particular moment. However, you are not merely an experiential being. You are a spiritual being, an eternal being that is forever and ever unfolding to reflect and reveal and represent the infinite. So that's, that's, that's one. Two, you have arrived on this planet and this human incarnation full to overflowing with all that the presence is. So you begin your day, you begin your prayer, you begin your meditation practice with the awareness that you already have everything. Again, this may not square with your personalities or sub-personalities or your experience of life, but that's an eternal and spiritual truth that you're beginning to discover and activate as you are sitting, or as you are affirmatively praying, or as you are affirming the truth of your being. You don't begin in lack, scarcity, separation, or limitation. That is a misuse of the sacred law of mind that says, in substance, it is done unto you as you believe. You always begin, even if you can't see it with your eyes or feel it with your emotional body. I have everything that I need. I need to discover it, activate it, and express it. 
So as you're sitting in the meditation, what are you doing? You are sitting to wake up from the matrix of separation so that you can see not with eyes, so that you can hear not with your physical ears, that you are living and moving and having your beingness in this grand presence. As you are sitting, and this becomes a, a dimension of your, your way of living, pinpricks of insight, ahas, satori moments, begin to flood your awareness and incrementally, suddenly, you begin to know at a soulful level, which you may have read about in all of the mystical and metaphysical books that are in your library or that you have perused through over the years. You begin to know all of those sacred truths that you've heard over and over and over again. You are one with God. There is no God but the one God. That God is the only life that there is. That life is eternal. That life is forever and ever unfolding. We represent that life. We are the image and likeness of that life, etc., etc., etc. We've heard these sacred teachings for so many years, and you may get excited about it. You may be enthused about it. However, your dedication goes beyond your temporary excitement. In other words, as you become enthused about these things and you read about, oh, this is true, oh, this is magnificent, this, oh my God, the possibilities are endless, that's a beautiful start. But dedication is the key. This is in any walk of life, whether you are an athlete, we, whether you are a mathematician, an artist, ultimately those who are dedicated to the practice reap the results of the infinite potential that lies within one. If you are dedicated to your practice, you may learn to play music on the piano. If you're dedicated to your practice, you may become a great athlete or a mathlete. If you're dedicated to your practice, you may become a great singer or a great teacher. But just to have the theory behind these particular endeavors and to be excited about the possibilities is one thing. But without dedication, the potential does not come into fruition. This is why, as a spiritual community, our foundational piece is meditation. You may hear about the laws of manifestation, the laws of perfect healing, right relationships, etc. But the bottom line, not the line in the practitioner's office. <laughs> this guy, this, he's a little nuts. I worry about him sometimes. Not really. The bottom line is be still. Be still and know that I am God in the midst of you. Without the stillness, the sacred silence, withdrawing from the world of experience, effects, uh, circumstances, situations, opinions, points of view, positionalities, perceptions, it is very difficult to make headway against the onslaught of the race consciousness, the collective belief of society that, you, that, this, that is displayed wantonly in social media, across the media platforms on your television that speak of the lowest common denominators of the human experience, fear, doubt, and worry. It becomes very difficult to move against the headway of that kind of mental and emotional debris. You must, and where you're encouraged to be still on a regular basis and begin to know that the I am God. You, as a distinct unit of infinite potential, I am God in the midst of you. The sleeping giant or giantess is waking up. Now, here's, here's the beautiful thing about it. That which 
mm, motivates you, inspires you, gets you up to meditate, that which has pulled you to this particular moment of meditation with thousands of people around the globe, that impulse is the thing itself rising up in you. It is the real you trying to break through the limiting paradigms of separation. It is oozing up. And when you say yes to it, I'm going to sit for, even if it's for a few moments, I'm going to attend the way of meditation service early Sunday morning, depending on your time zone, and then have some modicum of practice during the week. That impulse right there is the presence of God in you. Thus, when you hear this scriptural reference, and we're not religious, we don't, in terms of the real meaning of religion, which is to bind oneself back to the source, we don't get caught up in religiosity. But we hear this phrase that is very important, when deep calls unto deep, deep answers deep. So when that evolutionary impulse within you is rising up and you say yes to it, I'm going to stop what I'm doing for a moment, all the doings and all the future rising and all the to-do lists, i got to get all this stuff done. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to listen with my entire being. Deep is calling unto deep. In that moment, deep is answering deep. And when two or more are gathered in the name and in the nature of your highest potential, which is called the Christ, Christ shows up. When the conscious mind and the subconscious mind come together, the superconscious mind takes over. You're answering the call this morning. Deep is calling unto deep. And by virtue of the fact that you are here, deep is answering deep. You are changing the trajectory of your life. If a psychic sees something about to happen in your life because they're sensitive to what has been set in motion, and they see something about to happen, if you, and that, it doesn't matter whether that's good, bad, whatever the case may be. If, in fact, you stop and come out of the laws of cause and effect, which are Newtonian, by the way, they're not quantum, meaning that it, it all can be changed, you're pulling yourself away, and you're starting a new trajectory. You're coming back to the beginning. In the beginning, love. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, life. And then that trajectory changes. So you may be thinking up to this moment, oh, I got, if I didn't have any bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. You may be under the false impression, oh, my God, I've inherited all of these things from my ancestors, these disease factors. Everything has always gone against me. Things have been, may have been set in motion. But if you stop, pull away from the world of effect, circumstances, even your opinions about it, Begin again. In the beginning, life, love, beauty, intelligence, eternal one, the lover of my heart and the keeper of my soul, the presence of God, I yield. I say yes. Open mine eyes that I may see the glorious reality. Let me begin again, and again, and again, that my life may unfold to reflect, to reveal, and be a living revelation of that which is eternally true about me. That those who have ears hear, that those who have eyes see. Let's practice. We pull our attention away from the world of effects. We pull our attention away from where we have come to be here in this moment. We pull our attention away from where we are going, what we have to do the rest of the day. And right here, right now, this moment is vitally important. This moment. This moment. This now. 
we become aware that we are living an intentional life. We are intending in this second to wake up to our glorious nature, which has the byproduct of breaking free from the matrix of time and space and limited points of view. We embrace this intention to wake up. We may even have our hands on our lap facing upward as a sign of receptivity to that which is always shining, glowing, giving, radiating the presence. And we become aware that we have a level of dominion over our attention. We free it from the emotional conundrum of fear and doubt and worry and anxiousness and anxiety that may have condensed itself into emotional patterns. We free ourselves from that. And this moment is a moment of being with God. Not a man in the sky, not the guy in the sky, so high in the sweet by and by. No. Closer than our hands and feet, nearer than our next breath. Presence here. Our attention is embracing our intention to wake up. We're yielding to the truth that this is the first time we have ever practiced meditation because this moment we are a new unfolding iteration of our real self. And we listen with our entire being, not just with our ears, but our entire being is available to the insights, revelations, wisdom, spiritual guidance and direction coming from the very depth of our being. Be still and let the knowingness be activated deep is calling unto deep. And deep is answering deep via your sitting and becoming an established being in that which is eternal. The back is straight without being rigid. Eyes are closed, which immediately, immediately changes your brain waves to a higher state.
if the attention drifts, you have dominion. Exercise it. Bring the attention back to your sacred breath, which is happening presently. Embrace your intention of awakening and begin again.
Let us take a receive a wonderful inhalation. Receive it deeply. Release with a sigh of ah. Put a little smile on your face. Allow your body to feel that you are in joy. For being able to participate consciously in the realm of the divine, beyond religiosity, stepping into the eternal flow of ultimate reality. It is from this awareness that I have the privilege and the honor once again to evoke the power, the presence, the love, the intelligence, the beauty, the abundance of love, Almighty, all beauty, all joy. To be activated in each and every one of us with my full realization that there's only one of us. One power, one presence, one life revealing itself as the myriad, incomparable, individualized expressions of ultimate reality. As I am speaking this very word, this word is serving as a sacred law of dissolution and elimination to anything that would hinder, delay, obstruct, or deny the fullness of life from moving through and as us right now. That includes love and beauty, intelligence and spiritual power, creativity and harmonizing prosperity, wealth and abundance. All of this is free up in us to express itself more fully and more completely, not from the world of effects, but directly from our soul faculty. We begin again. Now, we feel that every single thing is working together for our individual and for our collective good. We no longer deny the light seeking to express through us. We no longer make excuses and complain about others denying our happiness. No one has that power. We confer upon ourselves that we can be happy right now. We can be in joy right now, in peace, in love, in abundance. For it is in God that we live, move, and have our being in it. We're in it. And it is in us. And it is us. We give thanks for this. We bless this day. It unfolds wonderfully. That is our declaration and decree. And the law responds to it. And we're shocked and surprised about the seeming miracles that now show up on our path to an ever unfolding revelation of more good than we could possibly imagine. And it is all happening right now. And so it is. And so we let it be. Now and forever. We open our eyes, whoever it is, whoever we're swimming in this sweet ocean of devotion with, perhaps we bow to each other, even to the sacred witness that's surrounding us. We say, now so be it. And so we let it be. Amen. And so I thank you, and your soul thanks you for stopping, for participating in this way of meditation service that happens Every single Sunday, 6.45 a.m., emanating right here from Agape International, that's Pacific time. So adjust so that you can join us every Sunday for a moment of restarting our week together in the sacred silence. This is our opportunity to put, this, to, to put the sacred laws of manifestation into practice, and that is through gratitude and generosity. Gratitude, I give thanks. And generosity, what can I give today? We take this opportunity and we turn within for a second and we bless what we have to give. And we can hear that two ways, what we have to give. For they who have more shall be given and what we have to give. Because we have to give, you see. So we bless what we have to give and we dedicate it to the knowing of truth that makes us free. And we let it be. 
Amen. So whatever it is we have to give today, we take it in our mind first. We bless it. We transcend the ego and we give gratefully. So you give in these particular ways. Since most of you are online at this particular moment or on YouTube, somewhere other than in this sacred sanctuary, you use the best way to use your technology today. You take your telephone, your telephone, wow, your mobile phone. I'm actually revealing my mother's age. <laughs> Sweet Alice. Listen, take your phone, that cellular device. Shine it in the direction of the QR code right here on the screen. It'll take you right into the Supreme Portal of Agape International. There you will discover how to make a donation. If you put the word cover after the donation, it means you are paying for the uh, cost of that technology, which is approximately 3% of your gift. You don't have to put cover, but if you want to eliminate the cost to us, you can do that. If you'd like to text, Text the word GIVE to 424-321-6243. It takes you right to the same, do same domain. Same rules apply. You put the word COVER after your gift. It covers the cost of the technology. Become a good giver. Become a regular giver. And always ask the question on a daily basis, what do I have to give today? You'll be full to overflowing by the Spirit, which will keep your hands full and your body full of energy to give because you're living from an overflow consciousness. If you would like to go to directly to our website, perhaps you're on our, one of our Facebook pages, perhaps you're on one of our YouTube channels, but you can go directly to your, our website if you're not there already. Go to agapelive.com, and there you will see the donation panel, it's, it's like it's, it's attached to our Quiet Mind bookstore. It looks like you're checking out with something. You make, let's say you're going to make a donation of $50 today. You'd put in the word $50, 50, and it looks like you're checking out, like you're buying something. You're just buying a, a, a peace of mind that you have more than enough. And obviously, we'll have your email. Obviously, it's all tax deductible. If you're at the Quiet Mind Bookstore and you want to purchase the book of the month or any of our other books, you can do that at the same time. So go to agapelive.com and make your donation there. If you want to mail in your donations, personally, I'm just saying personally, I like reading those letters. I like reading those cards, those testimonies and all of that. You don't have to mail it in, but if you want to mail it in, make your checks and money orders out to Agape International. Send it to 8549 Wilshire Boulevard. Sweet. 1146 Beverly Hills, California, 90211. All of this information is on the screen. The, the QR code will come back in a moment. Do not hesitate. Don't let the ego say you can do it later because you know how that ego is sly. It wants to keep you in your limited paradigm. As you begin to give on a regular basis, you're expanding your paradigm and you're opening yourself up for more prosperity. Give immediately, give regularly. As I used to say in Chicago, vote as many times as you can. <laughs> That's when it was very corrupt. Uh, governments are still corrupt. But anyway, uncorrupt yourself through giving on a regular basis. I'll be right back. The Reverend Julie Moret's going to come forward and highlight some of the things going on here at Agape. <laughs> Good morning. We've got a few highlighted announcements for you today. You can visit agapelive.com for more information and to find out about all of our weekly offerings, all times listed are Pacific Time. This week's guest on Reverend Michael's Take Back Your Mind podcast is renowned psychiatrist, professor, speaker, trainer, empath, and New York Times bestselling author of the newly released book, The Genius of Empathy, Practical Skills to Heal Yourself, Your Relationships, and the World by Dr. Judith Orloff. 
And be sure to check out the next episode of the Take Back Your Mind Life Question of the Week for, for you, not against you, embracing authenticity in the spotlight. And that airs this Friday. Watch or listen to Take Back Your Mind and the Take Back Your Mind Life Question of the Week with Michael B. Beckwith on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And subscribe to receive alerts when new shows drop each Wednesday and Friday. Agape University has some exciting class opportunities. Become aware of your inseparable connection to a mighty, inexhaustible presence that is always pouring forth blessings into your individual life and the life of those near and dear. Join Master Teacher Reverend Dr. Cheryl Ward in Self-Awareness and Transcendent Consciousness. This six-week class is offered on Tuesdays beginning April 16th, live on Zoom. There are some prerequisites uh, required to register for this class, and it is a required class for the practitioner pathway. And are you having trouble connecting with your kids? Do you react rather than respond to them? Are you anxious and stressed about social media and technology? Do you need some support in setting effective boundaries? When we as parents are connected to our own heart and highest parenting values, we are then able to bring this inspired way of being back into our relationships with our children. Join Agape University in community with Soul Center OC for inspired parenting tools for a thriving family, a deeply experiential journey into the heart of the parent. This is a five-week class taught by master teacher Reverend Susie Lula. Whether you're a parent or reparenting yourself, there's no more sacred life journey. Today is the last day of the early bird special pricing. You can register today at agapelive.com. We are back. Sacred Service Saturday, Agape's annual celebrate annual event celebrating service to our broader community returns. So save the date. We will be Living the Love on Saturday, June 15th. More information will be coming soon. If you're not in the Los Angeles area, go ahead and send an email to sslights at agapelive.com. We'll let you know how you might join us no matter where you are in the world. And Loving Hands Unite, the Adoption Foster Care Fertility Ministry, meets this Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you'd like support with any aspect of the adoption process, email lovinghandsunite at agapelive.com to receive the Zoom link and join. And finally for today, Reverend Michael's Adaptozen High Density Nutritional Supplement is back in stock at Nutrize. Rev's new formula is ready for you because remember, your health is wealth. <laughs> Give your body temple the raw materials it needs for renewal, regeneration, recovery, and the stability of good health. Subscribe to Adaptazen at Nutrarize and get the Rev Superfood Greens and Vitamin D3K2. Your body will love you back. Lots of options to choose from. Pick what's yours and jump in. Many blessings to you. Dynamic blessings to all of you. Let us receive the, the offering, the donations, the giftedness, the giving in prayer now. We accept these offerings. We accept the flow of love. Money is the shadow of love. Where there is love, the money and the prosperity will follow. We bless the loving hearts that are extending their loving intentionality by supporting this spiritual community now and on a regular basis, living from the overflow, we feel that our spiritual community has everything it needs to fulfill its divine mission, embracing and giving birth to the beloved community on earth as it is in the highest heaven within our own soul. We give thanks for this, and we allow it to be so, and so it is. Amen. Two things. If you're in the L.A. area, please come. Uh, to the 11 a.m. meditation service, the 11.30 worship celebration and fellowship service. Today we are honoring the Reverend Dr. James Lawson with our inaugural magnificent superhero nonviolence award. If you don't know who Reverend James Lawson is, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., called him one of the greatest nonviolent strategists that ever lived. He's nine, I think he's like 95 years young, at least 93. He'll be with us today to receive the award. He is the individual that helped birth the phrase, the beloved community. 
So we'll be honoring him this afternoon, or it'll still be morning at the time. So if you're in the LA area, come on out to Agape anyway. But if you want to see this giant of an individual uh, that orchestrated and strategized uh, these student sit-ins back in Nashville years ago and has done so much of all of these years to bring forth the spirit of ahimsa, nonviolence, compassion, right action, birthing the beloved community, please come out and help us to honor this powerful individual. Again, for those of you who want to mail in your donations, Agape International, 85. What is it, 85 what? I'm testing. You don't even know. Okay. 8549. See, he knows. That's Brother Victor. 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. Seniors in right away. Let us all rise up. There's only six of us here for this particular way of meditation service. But there's thousands of you tuning in at this particular moment. The Sangha, the community, of which is now... Mm. creating a level of coher coherence all around the globe for divine peace. And so as we hear Agape member Charles Holt singing, we're leaving the past behind us. We're not going to go get it. We begin to see with our spiritual eyes anew. We're ready for a dynamic change within us, a magnificent transformation, an unfoldment, an evolution. We're ready to be more and never less than our true self. This is why we arrive here, not merely to try to change and manipulate the external world, but to go in and reconfigure our perceptual windows, clean them up, that we may begin to see the way it really is, that which is forever and ever and ever that it may unfold but through us that we may anchor the realm of ever-expanding good on earth as it is in the highest heaven that is within our very soul. Go forth and multiply the consciousness of the all good. Are you ready for a change? Not just going through changes, but are you ready for a change that your soul say, yes, I am, and let it be, and so it is. We'll see you right here in person. 11 a.m. and 11.30. Peace and blessings. Ah.